Ladies and gentlemen, here she is, the hilarious Kathy Griffin. Crystal Palin on Dancing with the Stars, shall we? So, for me to watch Bristol on Dancing, it's difficult, and I'll tell you why. Um, I have mixed feelings. You know, a lot of people make fun of her on Dancing with the Stars, implying that she isn't a very good dancer. And I'm gonna defend her. Uh, yeah, surprise to the tea party. Here's why. <laughs> because, you know, I have seen the Johnston. I have had the Johnston inside me, and once you've had the Johnston, you can't just do ballroom if you feel like it. I mean, come on, she's not a bad dancer, she's just sore. All right. Don't act like you don't want to hear about the Hasselbeck <laughs> I, um, I will admit that I have a very checkered past with The View or as Barbara calls it, the boo. And <laughs> now I'm just gonna and put a match to it. So, so, um, I, I have, you know, co-hosted the show many times and lucky enough to have been a guest and met all kinds of exciting people. So here's how I feel about like the current group, right? So, you know, Whoopi and Joy, of course, comedians, we get along very easy, right? Um, Sherry Shepard, uh, I love, we were on Suddenly Susan together. Um, I know some of you are a little hushed because you think I'm going to make fun of Sherry, um, but I don't have to. Um, <laughs> I think that if you think the earth is flat, and if you think that if I run too fast, I might fall off the edge. Um, or if you think that Christians were the first people on earth, you've done my work for me. I... So anyway, and then of course there's Hasselbeck, who, um, by the way, a little fun fact for you, actually has said to me several times over the years, I think you're really funny. You know, of course she and I are on different parts of the political spectrum. You know, it's a, it's a coat of many colors, but um, you know, I've definitely made fun of her over the years and I freely admit that as I've made fun of everybody. Okay, so after years of doing The View and getting in trouble for saying certain things and sometimes, you know, Barbara's mad at me or sometimes the show wants to book me and sometimes they don't, fine. But now I think my current policy is, uh, or I should say was, that I could do The View as long as it wasn't a Barbara day. I, I'll take it. You know what? I'll take it. I'm happy to be there. And like I said, you know me, I'm always selling something. I got a book to sell. I got a show for you to watch. I want you to buy a t-shirt. I'm on the hamster wheel, right? Okay, so, so sure enough, I go and it's not a Barbara day, but I'm still thinking I have my seven minute segment here and I'm plugging the new season of the D list. So I was thrilled to be on the show and I just, you know, talking about the show, trying to make it exciting to the viewers and trying to make everybody laugh. I wasn't really focusing on Hasselbeck to tell you the truth. So I didn't notice, and if you have YouTubed this, I encourage you to do it tonight. Um, anyway, um, I did not realize that during my segment, apparently Elizabeth was yawning and rolling her eyes the whole time and just going, <sighs> and at one point was on the couch and actually was yawning and had her legs up like that, which um, is now my screensaver. <laughs> 
<laughs> and so the clock is ticking down and there was about a minute left and then Hasselbeck pipes up out of the blue and says, I'd like to know what it's like for you to be on this panel after having said things about people on this panel that are A, untrue, B, not so funny. <laughs> Honey, you could have heard a pin drop. <laughs> Because remember, this is a live show. This is a live show. And the poor live audience, like I could hear them just be like, what the f is going on? What's, what's going on? I thought there was gonna be a cooking segment. I thought they were gonna show us how to knit baby booties. What's going on? All right. So what you guys get that these celebrities still don't get is that I live for that shit. You get it. They don't get it. So, I, a million things went through my head, and if you watch the tape, you'll see my eyes are like freaking pinwheels. They are like pinwheels, because I know I only have a little time left, and yet this awesome thing has just happened. But I also know when I'm busted, I'm busted. And let me tell you, I have said some about Elizabeth Hasselbeck. I mean, I really thought she had me. You know, I thought she was gonna say, let's go to the tape or have a quote on a card. You could probably go home and Google, you know, Kathy Griffin talk about Elizabeth Hasselbeck and find pages of stuff. And so when Hasselbeck said that to me, I went through the Rolodex in my head of all the I've said all the times I've called her like a moron and uneducated idiot and, and crazy teabagger and Sarah Palin kiss ass. I mean, I really thought I was fizzucked, okay? And then, and then sort of, I just had a split second. I thought, you know what? I got to just take it. Whatever she's got on me, I got to take it. So I said to her, what do you got, Hasselbeck? Bring it. And the audience applauded. I couldn't believe it. The audience, her own audience, burst into applause. And then I knew it was a moment. Because what you guys get that she doesn't get is that that, for me, was a gift from baby Jesus. With a big bow on it. Because she had nothing. She had not, that's the part I couldn't believe. I really thought she was gonna have this list of horrible things and I was gonna have to do the whole speech about, well, it's all in fun and it's a joke. She had nothing. So anyway, there's only a few seconds left in the segment and the other host just started talking furiously, trying to change the subject. And they were all asking me questions off topic at the same time. It was like a bomb went off in the studio. <laughs> But I wasn't listening to a thing they were saying to me. They were all like the teacher from Charlie Brown. Wah, 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 wah. Because in my head, I'm really thinking, holy shit, she doesn't have anything? I don't mean to sound like a tool, and I might sound like an asshole saying this, but really, Hasselbeck, really, you're going to throw down with me? Really? Really? If you're gonna come to the play yard, be prepared to f play. So I was just thrilled. So they're asking me all these questions, wah, 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 and I was like, Phew. I was focused because I knew the clock was ticking down 10, 9, 8, and I said, I'm sorry, Hasselbeck, you have anything else to say? Boom, we go to commercial. All right. So you wanna hear what happened during the commercial break? Okay, they go to commercial, and once again, everyone on the show who works there is like, bye, Miss Griffin, like they can't get me out of there. Like, Thanks a lot, come back anytime, bye. And, and you know, I could tell the audience was uncomfortable, and I turned to the live audience and I said, come on, you guys don't really want to see me fight with Hasselbeck, right? Come on, shake my hand. And she wouldn't shake my hand. And I said, be a gentleman. <laughs> to me because sometimes I feel like if my breath isn't fresh enough, I want some white powdery bubble gum. <laughs> I 
case I meet someone and want to kiss them later or do huge amounts of blow. There's been so much happening in the news lately that it's really just a gift for a comedian. And um, I just knew that you guys could handle it. Okay. You know what I'm talking. I'll see you at the slots later. Um, oh, yeah, I enjoy slots of fun. Don't get me wrong. I am a crazed nickel slot player. So you will see me tonight at 5 in the morning with the half-watered-down diet soda at the nickel slots, and I'll be bitter. Um, I'll probably be down, like, you know, a buck 70, and I will be pissed off about it. And here's why. I don't know if this is your experience, but if there are any slot players, you know how you just have that one machine and you're like, I just have a feeling. That's my machine. Well, that's me. I'm the sucker who's sitting at that one machine for not like maybe at the most 17 hours in a row. <laughs> Hence the colostomy bag. Anyway, and I am playing my machine and playing it and playing it. And then finally I walk away and then who shows up? Oh, you know who I'm talking about. That's right, that's right. As I'm walking away from my machine I've been on all night long, I actually hear her, and this is old, lucky Asian woman. You know, you know what I'm talking about. I actually hear her on my machine going, how much I ween? going on in the celebrity news world that I actually got a call from my beloved mother because my mom as she watches these people on TV she really thinks that she knows them and she called me at 2 in the morning which means she was probably reading um, a box of wine okay so so anyway um, she called me and she's like Kathleen I'm so nervous about Paris's arrest have you talked to Paris I don't know what world my mom thinks I live in where I'm Paris Hilton's one phone call from jail. I wish I was, but um, I would just, as a family, like to discuss our BFF Paris Hilton's latest arrest. And here's why. Um, first of all, she's clearly an innocent victim of blind justice. We can agree on that. Um, also, what I love is a great, I love a great celebrity mugshot, first of all. Paris's were very glamorous, and you know, she often does her hair to one side like this, and so her first mugshot was kind of like, hi, I'm Paris. You're hot. Hi. Then the second one happened where she actually had to serve the time, and it was kind of more like, hi. Hi. And then there was the most recent one in Vegas, which was just her, uh-oh. Paris was um, in Las Vegas and allegedly driving down the strip in Vegas in a vehicle with the windows down and allegedly there was so much smoke billowing from the open windows due to maybe somebody smoking a blunt, I'm just assuming, but supposedly what happened was, and this is a really common story, I'm sure it's happened to many of you ladies here or will later, I mean, <laughs> okay, so... Paris Hilton apparently was leaving a club with her boyfriend, and um, when the cops pulled her over, they asked to see her Chanel clutch, and then she realized it was not hers, that she had accidentally um, taken a friend's Chanel clutch. I know. If that's happened to me once, it's happened never. Yes, so, um, you know, you're always mixing up your Chanel clutches with your friends. I know I am. Anyway, um, then the, she asked the police officers if she could go into a giant casino and use the restroom first, because they've never heard that one before, and they denied her that right. And um, then apparently they asked to see the contents of her Chanel clutch, and she was very surprised to see inside. Apparently and allegedly there was some cocaine, but wait a minute, that, okay, she could not have known that's what it was. In fact, she apparently told the officer that she thought it was 
That's why I love you. That's why I love you. Bubble gum. What? You, okay, like, I, it makes sense to me because sometimes I feel like if my breath isn't fresh enough, I want some white powdery bubble gum in case I meet someone and want to kiss them later or do huge amounts of blow. But for either reason, I really want my white powdery um, bubble gum. And so she, you know, didn't think it was her clutch, and I don't either, I really don't. And so she was wrongly arrested, in my opinion. Um, and unfortunately, her story might be falling apart a little bit because you know how the cops um, busted her? Is she f***ing twatted a picture of the day she bought that purse on her Twitter account. Oopsie, oopsie Daisy. So there's, this has really been the year of scandals out of left field and that's really what I love because um, there is an update on the Tiger Woods story that I just love. Oh, straight guys, this is your section. Wake up. This is your moment. This is, your, this is our moment. So, here's why the Tiger Woods story is the gift that keeps on giving, okay? Because, first of all, I'm still fascinated that Tiger Woods ever could get laid. I'm sorry. I know he's rich, and I know he's a champion. I'm sorry, straights. I'm just telling you, as a straight chick, he just looks like a boring lay. Sorry. I know he's rich. I know he writes the checks. Looks like that guy who lays there and does nothing and is like, I'm Tiger, you f***ing do it. <laughs> Tee off, bitch. <laughs> Get the putter, whore. Like, I just... Okay, so... So anyway, I, I have two favorite characters in the Tiger Woods story. Neither one of them are Tiger Woods. Number one, the poor Asian mom. <laughs> Yeah, you should groan. I feel awful for her. You can tell she tried her best. And when he did that first bullshit apology with the blue curtain, and he came out, remember, and he acted like he was sorry. And of course the wife didn't go, why would she? And the poor Asian mom is there, and she was really stoic and trying to be supportive, but you could tell she was pissed. You could tell she was like, oh, I'm so mad at you, Tiger! Why is sexy all the time, Tiger? Why are you signing? Make no sense. Because, of course, in my mind, it's the same woman. Tiger's mom has my machine, I'm telling you. All these sevens on the line! I know. You beat my ass again. I know. All right, so... But really, probably the smartest character in the story is the ex-wife, Elin Nordegren. Okay, first of all, proof that no matter how gorgeous you are, got, you know, some guy's like f***ing around on you, right? So that is hard enough, but this girl could not be more gorgeous and perfect. But what I think is funny is every time the paparazzi follows her, don't you feel like they want that picture of her looking really sad and tragic? Oh no, let me tell you something. She could not be happier. Elin Nordegren, how many girls here would trade places with her in a second? Where do I sign? You know why? First of all, she doesn't have to bang him anymore. And she's probably going to get like $500 million. Perfect. So they keep getting these pictures of her with the two kids, and she's just laughing all the way to the bank. Hugin, flugin, hugin, flugin. Fjorda, fjorda, hurda, fjorda. She's fine. And I says, the strangest thing is happening. I'm having sickness in the morning time. How could I have known I was pregnant? I, um, I want to, you know, ask you if you're watching a couple other shows that are on, I just, I'll say another network. And <laughs> I just think there's some good shit out there that I want to help you to. Um, first of all, sometimes show titles will just grab me as I'm flipping around. And by the way, I admit to watching an insane amount of TV. And when you hear these European studies where they'll say, it's shocking, some Americans have been known to watch up to six hours of television a day. I'm up to 20. I don't know about you, but yeah, I can sleep when I'm dead. And 
All right, so um, certain show titles, you know, catch my attention. Uh, please tell me, uh, I'm not the only person who saw a little gem on another network called The OCD Project. Okay, hear me out. Um, obsessive compulsive disorder is not something that we should make fun of. It is not a funny thing at all. And it's a serious disorder where people have struggles. Shame on you. Um, all right, I can't help it. I know OCD is real, but that was some funny shit. That was some unintentional funny shit. Uh, please tell me you saw um, the crazy bat shit lady who was so nuts that every single time she got in her car, she thought she hit someone. It gets better. She thought she hit a baby. No, no, don't groan, don't groan. She's never hit anyone, much less a baby. She's just a cuckoo, allegedly. Anyway, so the OCD Project is this awesome show where they put a bunch of crazies in a house like Big Brother, but for people with OCD. Hi. Okay, exactly. I'm in. I'm in. I'm all in. I'm doubling down on the crazy. So, so this woman would get into her car every day. And by the way, she lived in the burbs with cul-de-sacs and First of all, if you have that disorder where you think that you hit someone and you didn't, move to Manhattan and take the subway. Problem solved. All right, but I digress. So they showed her getting in the car every single day, driving five miles an hour, and thinking she hit someone every two seconds. Okay, now, how dare you laugh? Shame on you. Um, okay, so being a reality person, I know that the name of the game is you don't want to show the camera guy, right? It, you're supposed to make the audience feel like a fly on the wall, and they're not supposed to really be heard from. Okay, so I felt so bad for the poor guy that got the gig of having to be in the car every day <laughs> with this chick who keeps thinking she hit someone and she didn't. So they show her the first day white knuckling it on the steering wheel. I mean, she was really convinced. And so she's driving going, I, I think I heard, did I hit somebody? I think I heard, I have to go back. Did you hear that? I think I hit somebody. I really, I, 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 think, I, hit, I think I hit a child. And then you just hear the camera guy going, no, ma'am. I think I did, no, I, this time I think I really did. No, I think I, I have to go back. I know I've already circled the block 18 times, but I really, I think, I, did you hear that? No. All right, so if that isn't awesome enough, please tell me you saw what the therapist decided to do, decided to do to cure her. Um, this is called an exposure. And so the therapist did an exposure with her and that was to cure her. And he um, had her go to an empty parking lot and drive in circles, and I'm actually not saying how, I'm actually saying, may God strike me dead if I'm making this up. But to cure her, he had her drive in circles in an empty parking lot while throwing baby strollers at her windshield. You just hit somebody, you just hit somebody, you just hit somebody, I, I, no ma'am, I really think I should, no ma'am, but I really, no ma'am, you hit somebody. me crazy <laughs> book me room and how about when he upped the ante and you know I'm not making this up when he then threw cabbage patch dolls <laughs> you had a baby you had a baby you had a baby I really no ma'am but I think no he is the cabbage patch doll I really I turn around I I am not making fun of OCD in any way and neither are you. Could that be your deal? Okay, so um, I will say that I do get a little bit bitter and jealous when I see other shows that just look a lot freaking easier to do. I'm flipping around and when I see a title just called My Kid Ate What? <laughs> My Kid Ate What? And that's it, that's the show. It's a kid that ate like a, this straw. <laughs> That show apparently was so popular that they spun it off and there's an actual show called My Dog Ate What? <laughs> My Dog Ate What? And every week they follow the story of 
any dog fancy was walking down the street. He was looking like a daisical. And then they put the dog on the silver table and they do an x-ray and there's a full set of cutlery and the dog's like laughing and they cut it out and they're like, oh, my dog ate what? <laughs> I'm in a f fight with Senator Scott Brown from Massachusetts. My dog ate what? Okay. So now please tell me I'm not the only one who's enjoying a little gem called, I didn't know I was pregnant. <laughs> we are in business, my friends. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So I see the title. I didn't know I was pregnant. And I really think, oh my gosh, this is a serious docu-series about some third world country where they force 11 year old girls to give birth. You know, I don't know, I'm thinking it's set in like Mumbai or Sri Lanka or someplace in my head that's exotic and third world. Uh, I didn't know I was pregnant is about dumb bitches from here. Okay? <laughs> So at first when I saw that it was set in America, I thought, oh my gosh, it's gonna be the story of some poor 10-year-old girl, you know, in Elizabeth, Indiana that was forced to give birth. Oh no, it's some dumb bitch who already has two kids. <laughs> and it's just ignorant because the show's called I Didn't Know I Was Pregnant. So then I thought, oh, it must be about those rare medical cases where a woman shows no symptoms of being pregnant. No, no, it's dumb bitches here that have kids who have every classic symptom of pregnancy possible and yet didn't know they were pregnant. And talk to the camera as if they couldn't possibly have known. Now, the genius of this show is that it's half reenactments with really shiny, pretty, skinny actresses. But the other half is the actual woman who didn't know she was pregnant. And when we meet her, it's often a teeth optional situation. <laughs> story, we think it's going to be a tale of how she couldn't have known she was pregnant. And first, it's kind of interesting to learn when they already have kids, <laughs> so you'd think, no. Well, it turns out one day I turned to Earl and Earl Jr. and I says, the strangest thing is happening. I'm having sickness in the morning time. How could I have known I was pregnant? It was like I was having a sickness, but it wasn't in the afternoon time. It was like a morning sickness. How could I have known? So then, after a while, the strangest thing happened. I started gaining weight, but only in my midsection. In my midsection. So I turned to my baby daddy, Earl. I says, Earl, I'm putting on some weight. He says, baby, there's more to love. How could I possibly have known? And then I noticed as time went on, the weight gain only in my midsection had taken the shape almost like a basketball. <laughs> right here, it was right here. I couldn't possibly have known. How would I? And then sometime later, I'm gonna say about, oh, I don't know, eight and a half months. <laughs> Earl and I were at the chicken shack and having our buckets, nice family night out. And then I says, Earl, I feel a rumbling in my tummy. It's almost like, I don't know, I would liken it to a kicking. Ain't that something? How would I possibly have put it together? So then I turned to Earl and I says, Earl, we ought to get back. I got to pee real bad. <laughs> so we just made it back to the Winnebago. <laughs> and sure enough, I got a pee, so I set a spell. All right, now this next part, you know what's coming because you know you saw the sick sh <laughs> And we're going to talk it out. Because she said with no irony, so I sit down on my turlet. That would be turlet. T-E-R dash L-I-T-T. -T. And then she said, next thing I know there's a baby in my turlet. I swear to God. 
God. Both. Now, the reenactment of the Hollywood actress having to take the doll covered in, like, whatever, fake placenta, is priceless. Is priceless. And by the way, so a gig I would have done and, like, been like, score, I got 50 bucks, sweet! <laughs> To. Believe it or not, it brings me. Well, of course, my gays are here. Hello, gays. Hello, gays. Hello, gays. Hello, ladies. Hello, ladies. Hello, straight guys. I have the only Pachanga gay Indian with me. You have a gay Indian with you? How? to do. <laughs> How we do it is up to us. All right, so you want your Maggie update. You've driven for your Maggie update. You're getting your Maggie update. As I print. Okay. So I know how much you love your 90 years young Maggie Griffin, and you know how much she loves her box of wine. So just tip it. We're tipping it, and like I say, tip it. You know, at 90 years old, what am I going to do? Get her to stop drinking so she can shave, you know, minutes off her life? I mean, seriously, 90 years old, bottoms up. Enjoy it, Maggie. You earned it. Okay, so... tell you some of her recent misadventures because she is one of a kind and here's why now you know she actually wrote a book called tip it which is it's a real book too it's not like one of those pamphlets on the housewives and they're like i have a book really suck my dick i wrote a real book um, <laughs> so sure enough i was doing the jimmy kimmel show and they agreed to let mom come on the very end of my segment and they put her in the front row and then she got to plug her book so this was really great and i said okay mom you know just be yourself so i do my segment and i'm plugging you know whatever i'm plugging and then at the very end they show my mom in the front row and jimmy says so maggie i see you have a book out about how much you love drinking boxed wine and then my mother says, oh, I don't drink. Kathleen makes that up for her comedy. <laughs> um, all right, we're in a casino. So poker players, you know what a tell is, right? Yes. A tell is a physical manifestation uh, when someone's lying. So when I saw my mother's tell, which is the insane drunken hand wringing, I knew I was in trouble. So I don't know why she's promoting a book called Tippet and then saying that I make it up that she drinks box wine, but Jimmy Kimmel didn't fall for it. So he said, oh, Maggie, it looks like you have quite a bit of box wine. What do you do with the boxes? Do you make a fortress for yourself? <laughs> Jimmy said, really? I, I, that's what you do? And then she said, yes, I, um, I cut up the boxes into squares and I recycle them. <laughs> really? So now she's a longshoreman with a box cutter at 90. <laughs> she doesn't drink the wine. She recycles. And then Jimmy pushed it. And I really thought he would crack her, but he didn't because he said, really? And what do you do with your recycled boxes? And then she said, I donate them to the church. <laughs> and you donate them to the church because what the church needs is um, cut up, wine-soaked squares of cardboard. 
for the kids. It's for the kids. <laughs> All right, so I finished the segment. Wave. Thanks, everybody. We walk off together. We go nice and slow. Isn't she adorable? The minute we get my door, I'm like, what the f are you talking about? <laughs> and then she just lets loose. Well, I got nervous because you're always making fun of the goddamn church, Kathleen, and it's your fault. And I wanted to say something nice about the church for once because you're always talking about how those priests have sex with kids and they don't always mean to. And sometimes they feel bad about it. And I was just going to say something nice about the church, goddammit. I was nervous. I do have to tell you about when my mom got to go on Larry King Live because that was just a big deal and he's an icon and it was an honor and they actually, they had me on to promote, you know, whatever I was promoting and then um, they let my mom come on on her actual 90th birthday and they got a cake for her and it was super cool. All right, so I foolishly thought I was a big enough star to have what they call the full hour on Larry King. And then when I got there with my mom, I really thought in the last 10 seconds they were gonna like bring my mom out and give her a cake. No, no, they said, uh, your mom's in the final three segments. Oh yeah, she's a quarter of the show. F me and the horse I flew in on. Um, so I'm kind of having like a flashback to the Jimmy Kimmel experience and thinking like, oh my gosh, Larry King is, you know, it's, a, it's on CNN and, it, and be, it can be sort of a serious show. And so I said, okay, mom, just be honest and just be yourself. I am, I don't need you tell me what to, okay. So I should have known that was the red flag. So sure enough, um, she calls my assistant Tiffany, her unpaid intern publicist, which is so nice. You're not getting paid for this, Missy. It's a learning experience. All right, so there was a little liquid inspiration involved in that job assignment. Okay, so anyway, um, Tiffany and I are driving to Larry King. And, you know, we're kind of talking about what I should talk about or if I'm plugging the book or the T-shirts or the twats or whatever the hell I'm talking about, right? And then we hear my mom quietly in the back seat just saying, oh, shit. God damn it. Oh, son of a bitch. All right. Now, we're so used to her talking that way that, honestly, we don't really think anything of it. And it's continuing. And then we hear just more, oh, God damn it. Oh, shite. So finally, Tiffany says, Maggie, is everything okay? And then my mom says, oh, I forgot my damn teeth. <laughs> forget her lipstick, or her compact, or her wallet. She forgot her teeth. So then what followed was the discussion about do we have time to go back? Because remember the show's called Larry King Live. Thank you. Live. So Tiffany's like doing donuts in the street and my mom is yelling because she doesn't want to go back. And then I'm saying, Mom, you have to have your teeth. Oh, shit, I blame myself. I blame myself. Oh, I should have packed my. I wasn't thinking. Oh, What am I supposed to talk about? So we drive back to get her teeth. And, um... It turns out they were the first place we looked, which was, of course, wrapped in a paper towel in the pocket of her moo moo. First place we thought of. Oh, that's what I thought. So um, she went on Larry King and they gave her cake and she was charming and wonderful. Um, I will tell you, though, that right before we went on, and once again, I, I, she knows what live TV is, you know? And I said, okay, mom, you know, our segment is coming up together and, and you know, it's your birthday and this is, this, isn't this gonna be fun? And then she says, I don't know if I should do it. <laughs> and you know, the clock is ticking, right? And they're during the commercial break. And I'm saying, no, no, mom, we're, they just said, next we have Kathy's mom, Meg. Well, what if I get the shit? <laughs> yeah, not what camera should I look at? How should I address Mr. King? No. What if I get the shit? But at least she had her teeth, so it wasn't what if I get the shit? <laughs> Baby steps. I admit, I make fun of 
Teresa, because I think once you throw down and once you start with the prostitution, whoa! Prostitution, whoa! Like, I think we have to talk about the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Yeah, the Real Housewives of New Jersey. Okay, now let's just talk this through. Um, I have met some of them, and I am fascinated by all of them. Now, I thought that it, the Jersey Housewives was really going to be about a dude named Danielle. And then, of course, it turns out who really emerged, a little gorilla named Teresa. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. I, I am alleging that Teresa is not a fully formed human. Yeah, that's right. Because... Chromad man, but her forehead ends here. So I, I, I admit I make fun of Teresa because I think once you throw down and once you start with the prostitution, whoa! prostitution, whoa! like I, I, I don't know what her story is, but I will admit that I am fascinated by her absolute blind rages. And this year, we of course saw, is bitch better? Is bitch better? Um, I was scared watching it. I was just at home saying, no. I would prefer Kathy, and now I have the <laughs> And um, then of course, it comes to the crescendo, and he knows I'm gonna make fun of him, so I'm just gonna do it. When they have the reunion specials, Hosted by none other than Bravo's Andy Cohen. That's right. Go ahead. Because leave it to Bravo to put someone cross-eyed on the air and have them host a TV show. That's some funny shit. I'm only human. I'm sorry. I'm only human. But those reunions are so fantastic because they're, they're so drama-filled that He's got the crossed eyes, and they don't even know who the f he's talking to. Right? So he's going, so is it hard having TV cameras in your house? Is it invasive? Is it hard for the kids? Do you guys get along in between seasons, or? Mazel. All right. Um, and those poor girls are just like, is he talking to me? Is he asking me a question? I don't know who he's looking at. Is bitch better? All right, um... And on the Housewives of Jersey reunion, there was a fight so major that Teresa, in some sort of Hawaiian strapless, moo-moo-themed, I don't know what that was, I don't know who shot the moo-moo, but I fear for my mother's safety, um, where the argument got so heated that Teresa took Andy Cohen, the host, and physically threw him in a chair, and for one minute, his eyes uncrossed.